bless your name, Jesus. We glorify you. 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 We magnify your name. Hallelujah. We glorify you. We glorify you. We glorify you. You are great God, you are an awesome God, and we glorify you, we glorify you, we glorify you, we glorify you, you're worthy, 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 we glorify your name, hallelujah. It's because of your mercy and your goodness that we were not consumed. Great is your faithfulness, hallelujah. Great is your faithfulness, hallelujah. Great is your faithfulness, hallelujah. Because of the Lord's mercies, they fail not. Great is your faithfulness, hallelujah. We glorify your name. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Your name is worthy. 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 If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would I be? Hallelujah. Where would we be, God? Where would we be? Because you are on our side, we glorify your name. We glorify you. Hallelujah. 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 How many know that the Lord is worthy on today? Hallelujah. Your name is worthy. Hallelujah. You're awesome, God. You're mighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together if you know that God is worthy.
Hallelujah. Come on and bless the name of the Lord for our children on this morning. Hallelujah. Come on and praise the Lord for our children. Hallelujah. Does anybody know who you are? That makes all the difference when you know who you are and whose you are. Hallelujah. That when we're a child of God, there's no need to fear. Hallelujah. All the fear is gone. Hallelujah. When you know who you are. Hallelujah. We're not prideful. We're just confident in who we are and who's anybody excited about it today. That's a lot to say I'm a child of God. That I belong to God. Hallelujah. I don't have to fear. His love overcomes the fear. Hallelujah. Is anybody excited? Hallelujah. That perfect love casts out all fear. That's scripture. That's a promise. Is anybody resting in his love? Hallelujah. I don't have to fear anything because of who I am. Hallelujah. I'm glad about it today. You got to know your identity. I know my identity. Where are all the people that know their identity? You got to give a shout out of praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't have to fret. A thousand fall on one side and ten thousand on my right side. And the scripture declares that nothing shall come nigh me because of who I am. Hallelujah. I'm so glad about it today. Hallelujah. We can rest in that fact that our God is ever so mindful of us and all concerned about little old me and you. Hallelujah. We give his name, praise, and glory. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. In the presence of the Lord, we thank God today. Forget who you were before Christ. I'm in Christ. That's who I am. I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. Do we have any first-time visitors? Would you please stand? Any first-time visitors with us on this morning? We don't have any. Praise God. Greet one. Just turn to your neighbor and tell them, blessed be in the house of the Lord on this morning. Blessed it is to be in the house of God. Does anybody believe that? That it's a privilege and an honor to be in God's house. Just one more time. Hallelujah. His presence is already here. Hallelujah. We're so grateful. And for those of you who are part of this body and continue to come on behalf of our pastor, Malcolm D. Lewis, we do welcome you on today. We're so glad that you pressed your way to the house of God. Hallelujah. You know I mean? No deliverance is here. Healing is right here. An answer to your prayer is right here. Amen. The hold on just a little while longer is in the house on today. Hallelujah. Give God glory. Hallelujah. Please stay tuned. Amen. For our weekly announcements. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Only for $10. Oh, great deal. I think I can see this one. Canvas of Love, Wednesday at 7 p.m. No Bible study? I wonder what that is. I've heard of it before. Basically, it's like a Christian version of Sip and Paint, where you do painting, have snacks, and you can bring a friend. And it's free for the community. Mm, I think I might go. Mm, what does that one say? Oh, this one says Thursday 7 p.m. workout, also for $10. Ooh, not a great deal. Uh, I think I can see this one. Discipleship Ministry Launch Monday, 7 p.m. at BOL? Mm-hmm. Oh, here's a Black History fact. Did you know the Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice, was written by James Johnson in 1900? Mm, I never knew that. I wonder if everybody in the store can repeat this faith confession. I am a suitable fit for Christ because of his sacrifice at the cross. Wow, those are some great ingredients. Hmm, I might buy this. Wait, what does this one say? B 
beacon of light where you can find deliverance, direction, and, and destiny. destiny. Thanks for all your help. <laughs>
Come on, sing it to him. Worship it to him. Here I am to worship. You're tangible, God. Here I am to bow down. We bow down. We bow down. We're here to worship. Here to worship. We're 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 here to worship. Here I am to worship. Come on, just lift your hands to Jesus. Come on, sing it to him. You're Say it again, here I am. It's me, God. I come to worship. Come on, tell it yourself. I came to bow down. I came to say you're God, that you're King, that you're Lord, that you're Savior. And we appreciate you, Lord God. We appreciate you. You're all together, love. Hallelujah. All together, love. All together. Come on now, just lift your hands of glory. Come on, let's bless him, let's bless him, let's bless him, let's bless him. Let's bless him, let's bless him, let's bless him, let's bless him. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. We come to worship, 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 we come to worship. You and only you. We come to worship. 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 You and only you. You. Let's give God the honor and glory this morning. 
truly he's worthy to be praised this morning. God, we thank you. We praise you. We do give you honor and glory for truly your word to be praised on this magnificent day that you have made. We thank you, God, for all your divine glory, your presence in this house right now. And we just thank you today, oh God. So God, we honor you today. We praise you. We rest at your feet. We love you this morning, God. We come to just say, we love you. We keep it simple this morning. We say, we just love you this morning. We thank you for this divine opportunity we have to sup with you and your word. So we pray your blessings upon our hearts and our minds that you will make it open and receptive to what you want to speak to us this morning. We pray this now in the name of Jesus. And if your heart said amen. Amen. Let's go quickly to the book of Genesis. Let's move quickly to the book of Genesis. Thank God again for our children. Worship team, we thank God for the audio this morning. Genesis 2, uh, verse 18, quickly this morning as we, we expound on God's word. And verse 18 says, in Genesis 2, verse 18 says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was his name. So Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the birds of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. Verse 21, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up his rib in his place. Uh, then a rib which the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman. And he brought her to the man. And verse 23 says, And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. I want to talk this morning about under construction. I want to talk about one flesh. You may be seated this morning. Good to see everybody this morning as we started a discussion, really not just on marriage, everything that we're speaking really is about marriage, relationships, uh, just life in general. I think we can learn a lot from marriages and trans uh, seeing those principles uh, into pretty much any particular area that we want to be successful in. Uh, I want to talk about under construction. I want to talk about one flesh, which gives a idea of unity. Uh, because success in life can never be achieved without unity. There's no person who has ever been successful who have had not had a good team, a good group of people. Uh, we know our saying um, that comes from years and years and years ago, it takes a village to raise up a child, uh, which gives the idea you and I, none of us can be successful uh, by ourselves. But God as always will give us a team of people to achieve very special and very unique things for our lives and for the kingdom of God. So I want to talk this morning, and I want to understand you, you to get this. This is the caption. We are dealing with marriages, but I believe there, there are people who are not married, uh, who will be married one day, um, who will position themselves to be successful as they take and understand this instruction. Then there are some people who are not married and will never be married, and, and it, that may be your calling to never be married. Uh, but again, you could take some of these principles and you could take them outside of just the confines of marriage and, and you could transition it to business. Uh, it could be transitioned to just a household. Uh, and then 
there are some of us today that uh, just just really we just we just need a, a good dose of some relationship skills. We just we 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 do good singing. We good do good preaching. We do good with a lot of different things. But we we're very terrible when it comes to relationships. And I tell people all the time that we're not in the business of saving souls. We're in the relationship business. The better you become with relationships, the better your life will become as it relates to what God has assigned for you in this particular. Uh, time that we have on earth. So I want to talk about, uh, matter of fact, we talk about unity, we might as well talk about Black History Month a little bit. Amen. Uh, so uh, Black History, um, uh, we have made great achievements, we've, we've made some great strides, and we have made great impact um, to the lives of many. Matter of fact, this country will not be what it is without the black person, the black family the black marriage, the black man, the black woman, the black children. We as a world are better because God thought it wise to design black people. Uh, we have not and will not, unfortunately, make the greatest mark that God has desired and designed for us to make because we do not flow in a level of unity that it will take to do greater things. Uh, we do a terrible job in the black community with unity. We don't support one another. We bicker and fight about everything. Uh, we, 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 instead of raising up a child with a village, used to be back in the day that if your child had an issue and, and, and it was my business to go and, and tend to your child and help that child, uh, we'll talk about somebody else's child before we even try to help the child. Uh, we don't support one another in business. Other community dollars circulate 15, 16, 22 times, days before that dollar makes it out of the community. And in our community, it circulates less than six hours. We don't, we, don't, we don't do a great job when it comes to success in our culture because we lack unity in our culture. Come on, somebody. And so we have to understand that it's not the white man, it's not the devil, it's not the systems to be uh, that has caused us to live a life in this nation under where other people are at. We do it to ourselves. Matter of fact, our division has, has little to do with slavery. Has little to do with the Jim Crow laws. Division was before slavery. Division in our community, in the black community, go all the way back to West Africa, as far back as we can date. When, when there were tribal wars and one tribe in Africa would go and defeat another tribe. And when they defeated the other tribe, they would take people captive from that tribe, black folk, taking other black folk captive, and they found a way to profit off of those that they would take captive. So they would go to the Europeans, they would go to the Sp Spanish people, they will go to the Brazilians and they will ask them, we, do you want to purchase some black folk? So our divisions go way beyond slavery. Way before we got here, 1619 in Jamestown, which is really not the beginning of slavery in this nation. Slavery began uh, as far back in this nation in the 1500s. But, but our issue go all the way back to our legacy back in Africa. 90% of the folk who were enslaved in Africa was sold by black folk. So you didn't learn this on Roots, did you? Roots, Alex Haley didn't teach you this on Roots, did he? 
Yeah, yeah, 90% of all black people who were enslaved in Africa were sold by other black folk. See, y'all don't want to talk about this today. That's okay. That's okay. That's your black history tip for today because I'm moving into marriages in a minute. Matthew 12, 25. Matthew 12, 25 says, Every kingdom that is divided against itself is brought to destruction. Or desolation and every city or house that's divided against itself it will not stand I don't care how great the house is don't care how the great uh, and, 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 and pretty the folk is in the house don't don't care what skills they have how much money they make if they're divided against themselves they will not stand any church that is divided against themselves any business that is divided against itself will not stand. These are some ex excerpts I found. Um, Aristotle says to find, find the good, seek the unity, ignore the divisions among us. Publius Cyrus, who was a Syrian uh, slave in Rome, says where there is unity, there is always victory. Thomas Paine said, this is not in numbers, but it's in unity that our great strength lies. Then Sherry Drew says this, corporate CEO says, neither man nor woman is perfect or complete without the other. Thus, no marriage or family, no ward or stake is likely to reach its full potential until husbands and wives, mothers and fathers, men and women work together in unity of purpose, respecting and relying upon each other's strength. Respecting. So in God's eyes, when we, when a person's, and, and this is for those who are married, those who will one day get married, those who will get remarried, I want you to understand something. Would you get an understanding of what God is saying about his marriage? Our community, the most ugly part of the fiber of our existence is broken families. I like what the CEO said again. She says, unity and purpose, respecting and relying upon each other's strengths. I'm not going to deal with that today, but, but basically we are all strong people. We're the most feared people. We're very feared because of our intellect, because of our strength, because of our creativity. And as strong as we are, we're still fighting against each other, want to be stronger than the next person when we should just respect the strength that each other have and fall in line with that strength. In my house, both of us can't be strong financially. I'm the financial strong one in the house. My wife, my wife's duty is to submit to my strength and finances. I'm not as strong as my wife in some areas. My duty is to submit to the strength that she has in certain areas. She, 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 she don't get the place to fight with me with finances. Come on, somebody. She has to submit, respect my strength, and submit to the strength that God has placed in her life. So as each one of you. We're doing too much fighting, and some of us weak in areas that we're trying to fight for strength. That's a whole different subject. I can't, I'm, I'm just, just something different. Listen, no, you can't do it. You, you know, you know you keep, you know you ain't been graced to, to do it, but you still want to fight to do it. You have to learn how to hold, know where to fold, know where you're strong, know where you're weak and be able to make the adjustment so there, there can be unity and order and things can function according to God's will. We ain't got to be fighting about things. We still fighting about the same things we fought about for 30 years. Something is wrong. 
We put it in your hands, you try that you fail. Give it back to me and let me do what I need to do. But you don't keep getting it back. They keep on failing and failing and failing and failing and still keep talking about, well, I'm a person too. We know you're a person, but you need to learn to respect. And anytime you respect something, it, 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 it cries out also to submit to that which you respect. I ain't even got in the message yet. I'm still in the intro. Listen, I just want to take a little point there. But listen, in God's eyes, when one person gets married, there are no longer, there, there's no longer individuality. We're no longer individuals in God's eyes. We're oneness. That's why the Bible talks about here. He says we become what? In verse 24, one flesh. In God's eyes, you're, I'm, I'm no longer Malcolm from his eyes. When you get married, it's such a big deal to God. He sees us as a unit now. That's what verse 21, 22 says. He caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he took Adam's rib and, and took the rib and made woman. One flesh. Bone to my bone, flesh to my flesh. One flesh. One bank account. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do that to you this morning. Come on, uh, it, it is no longer my car. You, my, 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 we don't, we don't never talk about my bills. It's our bills, but, but, but my paycheck, my car. And all God says is one. My mistake is our mistake. <laughs> my, uh, my is not. My bankruptcy is our bankruptcy, but 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 because you get a third check every month, it's it's that's mine. It, it ain't no longer mine. It, it, it's all ours because God says we're now one. There's a oneness. When God looks from heaven, he does not see Waldell, don't see Robbie. Ain't no use in him talking about her. She's talking about him because God says you're talking about your own self because I don't do separates. I do oneness. There's a oneness that I do. He says you're one flesh. You're no longer dual people. You become one flesh. That's why they take on our name. That's why the wife take on our name. But then they want a hyphen. Come on. Then they want to put a hyphen in it. They want to hyphen something. One is in, 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 in money, but, but not one in be. Because it, I'm trying to stay in the zone. I'm trying to be a. Want to put a hyphen in there. Just in case hyphen. A hyphen in there. Because they ain't ready to go all the way with oneness. So there's a hyphen to let you know that yes, I'm married, but I still got my own identity. That's what hyphens means. Get rid of the hyphen. That's what it means. We got married. I was at a doctor one day and she put a hyphen, hyphen, who hyphen, 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 hyphen. Uh, uh, Lasting hyphen Lewis will let Lasting take care of you. Let, let Lasting sleep with you. Let Lasting have some more kids with you. If you're going to be with me, get rid of the hyphen. And we got, we, we kick hyphen out the door in the second year to marry. Hyphen ain't got no place in this house. Hyphen. Their lives are now interwoven from that point and it becomes a new entity. There's a new entity that has been existing. He takes two individuals, he makes just like a corporation. He, a corporation is called an entity. He makes now a new entity. Emotionally, spiritually, intellectually, financially, and sexually, and in every way, we have become one. Building this one new entity is the most complicated labor intensive but blessed construction building project. That's why we say don't enter into it ill advisedly. Go and do your research. Go and call for the surveyor. 
Go and check with the zoning boards. Go and check out the cost of all the material. No man goes to build something and don't count the cost first. I've never seen a building. I've built many things. I've never seen what one building project go exactly how it was to say it was going to be at the beginning. Can I keep going? And this is the reason why so many people quit. They get in the greatest, most valuable building project known as humanity, building a marriage, but they don't finish the building project because it's complicated. So I want to talk about how to build it. Can I talk about how to build it this morning? First of all, you must build with new materials. <laughs> you, you, you can't go and get some old wood and old drywall and old insulation from somewhere else and want to put in your new building. You need new, new, new materials. Verse 24, she says, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother. Oh, my God. Oh, this is going to bless y'all right here. That's gonna be, it's going to get tight right up in here. Listen. Therefore a man shall leave, depart. Get the skipping, get the stepping, whatever you want to call it. But, but a man shall leave his father and mother. Because, see, we ain't got a problem leaving our fathers. <laughs> but that mother, come on, come on, stop, stop, come on, stop sucking that milk out that breast, come on. The mother, we ain't got a problem. So he, God is very unique. He's very, very intelligent. He says, make sure, and mother, and then be joined, oh, my God, to his wife. In order... I've taught you to cleave, you got to leave. You can't cleave if you don't leave. You have to leave to cleave. You have to leave something if you want to go and build something. You got to leave, say leave, in order to do what? In order to cleave. Christ teaches us this, and our marriage to him. 2 Corinthians five seventeen tells us this. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have paid. God says, don't bring your old mess up in here. I'm marrying you. This is salvation topic. If anyone be in Christ, he's a new, he's a new creation. He's a new entity. Me and him is one now. He says, old things got to be passed away. And now behold, things got to become new because you will ruin the new with the old. So you got to get rid of old habits and ideologies and, and, and old sin for ways that don't complement our marriage of holiness. He says old things have got to be passed away so now there can be a good union between me and you. Everybody will work with you. Work with your, your lifestyle to get rid of that mess. Because he it says it's going to ruin your experience with this marriage. You can't be married to the new man and still locked in with the old man. Loose the old man so that me, you, and the new man can now be one. Can I keep going? Outside of marriage, this is one of the biggest issues of salvation. Why people want to leave Christ and go and serve Buddha and Huda and, and Juka and Luca and, and Muka and all of these kind of folk because they say Christ didn't work, Christ did work. You didn't behold, you didn't pass some things away so all things become new. And you went to a new experience but still experienced the old experience because you brought the old into new. You can't do it. And that's what God is saying here. When you talk about Mary, he says, leave in order to cleave. Any relationship that exists in your past life, listen, married people. And I promise I'm not trying to cause 
problems with your household. Any relationship that exists in your past life before you get married that will hinder your ability to leave or to build this new marriage, you have to reprioritize it. He says, leave father, leave mother. No, he's not talking about just get rid of your mom and dad, never being in fellowship with them. That's not what he's saying. What he says, you've got to reprioritize the relationship. He uses mother and father because that's your strongest relationship in this earth outside of your wife, your husband. He says, so leave this. So it stands to reason that if he says husband and mother and father, he's talking about every other relationship that may uh, uh, hinder your new relationship with your spouse. Because once you get married, that relationship becomes first and foremost. That's why, well, especially black woman, that tell a black man, you just a mama's boy. What she's saying is, you ain't left mama yet. Well, you, 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 you. So, so we've got to understand because of the fact we're trying to, to, to keep the same relationships at the same value and we're trying to fit our spice our spouse in it without reprioritizing. Can I talk about you? If, if talk to you, if, if if you bring children from another relationship, it's gonna get a little deep. If you bring them from another marriage relationship, I know y'all got history. I know mama or dad is your ride and die. We're best friends. When you get married, that child from that old relationship does not take the same value as your spouse. When you get married, you're telling everybody, even children from other relationships, that you all are no longer number one. You're number two, you're number three, you're number four, or wherever you're at, but this person right here is my primary responsibility. Boy, y'all back it up on me now. That's what you're saying. He says you got to reprioritize. Say reprioritize. You can't keep me and your children at the same place in value because you're going to give up making this person happy for this person right here. You've got to learn to say my number one goal in life now is to make this person happy. Is to, make, is to push this person as far as I can be. Now I want to do that for everybody, but you've got to make sure that this person deserves all of that. That's got to be that's got to be a great man or woman to make me do all that with these relationships. That joker got to be able to walk on water. He's got to be able to call for heaven now to make me to make me reduce all my relationships for him and her. That, that means this got to be a great. So before you enter into this and advise it, just because they can do this or that based on this or that, and this, I'm telling you, it, it's, it, it's going to be a higher calling when you get married. And then there is some relationship you just need to let go. You need to cut it. You need to say this relationship is, is just a hindrance to, to my marriage. I, I, I just, I, it's God, has, God has spoken now. Now, you'll know if God spoke, but, but God has spoken, and, and, and I got to do some separation now. You hear this, Peyton? Paige, when y'all get married, Paul. He said, whoever you get, they going that ain't the one no more. <laughs> I'm trying to have a, he ain't the one in your life no more. He's just a little man. He just, he's just a little man on the totem pole now. Your mama just going to be a little smidget in your life now, so you better make sure they worth it. Because <laughs> when daddy becomes a little smidget, I don't do the stuff that I used to do as a big smidget. Come on. So you got to reprioritize. Say reprioritize. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't know all this. That's what I'm teaching you. You didn't know all this. You didn't know all this. But also you have to renounce. Because you learn from your parents and others 
how they did stuff. They ain't got nothing to do with you. You, 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 you learn their ideologies, how they took care of home. You learn different things, habits, not that they were bad habits that don't fit where you finna go with your new spouse. And so you have to leave and renounce things, cultures that you were brought up in that has become come part of your DNA that is not a part of the DNA of the new marriage. When God called Abraham to go into jail with him, he says, leave your father's house. Because he was worshiping other gods, had different cultures. He says, you got to leave them in order to go on this new journey. Is this making sense? Y'all still good? This is how much you know if you really want this marriage. This is how you really know it. Are you, are you, are you willing to leave some relationships and leave is defined as renounce things and also we prioritize things. Then you got to be careful of what you build on. Can't build on everything. Don't go out there and find no mud hole out there and try to build nothing on it. It's going to sink on you. Go to Matthew uh, 724. Matthew 7, 24 tells us this. Therefore, whoever hears these things or these instructions of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Keep going, verse 25. And when the rain descended, the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house and it did not fall for it was founded, what? On the rock. The only way to build a successful marriage, you're going to have, to, you're going to have some solid foundation. And of course, Jesus talking about the number one foundation, the solid foundation you can have is him. He is the rock. Jesus, build your marriage on me. Don't build your marriage on anything else. Build your marriage on Christ. Build your marriage on Christ. Build your marriage on Christ. If you're already married, get to building your marriage on Christ. In relationship and also in instruction. That's your blueprint. Your blueprint is that we're building our marriage on the design that God has for our marriage. Everybody get married, God has a blueprint for you. The blueprint for my marriage is not the same blueprint you're going to have. Every blueprint is different. And God says, I will teach you, I will show you, I'll give you instructions on how to build this marriage. Because there's going to be some rains and storms and tornadoes and earthquakes that are going to come to test the foundation. You got folk been in your past and you ain't heard from them for years. They just show up one day. You didn't even know you had no kids out there. They, the kids, five kids just knocking at the door with their mama and, and, and talking about you, you my daddy. You, you, it, 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 it. When you sat in marital counseling, you said we ain't got no bills like that. We, and that bill that you didn't pay, you forgot about 10 years ago would just show up out of nowhere. And it don't say you pay it. We've got to pay that now. Somebody going to lose a job in the marriage. Somebody going to lose income. Somebody going to get sick. I stood up there and married people for me. I get the part of sickness and health. They said, mm -mm, wealth to wealth. No. No, I ain't going to say that. Because somebody's going to get sick. Somebody, something is going to happen in your marriage. And that's why I tell people, don't get married to nobody. You ain't seen go through nothing. You don't see the real person until they go through something. When they go through something, the real them is going to come out. You're going to see what you got on your hand. And you say, who, who is this? 
It's the same one you married. That, had, that, that, that wasn't tested yet. <laughs> one enough fire put up under them. Yet, that's who it is. The one that you married. The storms are going to come. Y'all been married for how long? 43 years. We was on a prayer call Tuesday, and I just heard a little, little faint voice come on the prayer call. Pray for my marriage. <laughs> it, was, it was a little faint voice. It wasn't a bold voice. It was a, I don't even know if she wanted him to hear it or not, but he, was, he heard it because he was on there too. But I heard her say, she said, I, I pray for this marriage. She said, hey, pray for my marriage too. Uh, we, we got you out of right. We're going to pray for y'all marriage. Right here. Now, I don't, I don't know what happened this week. Don't know what went down in the proto home this week. Don't know what she found out. Don't know what happened in that household last week. But she said, 43 years, still pray for my marriage. Because there's still some storms that are going to rise. Unless you got a foundation under you called Jesus Christ. To ride out this storm. Forty-three years of heartache. Forty-three years of headache. Forty-three years of of the enemy trying to attack. Forty-three years of stuff coming out of nowhere. Forty-three years Texas that you didn't count on 43 years of just all kind of stuff 43 years of dealing with the children 43 years of having to deal with each other's siblings and 43 years of just mess but if you're founded on the rock not only will you survive but you will get stronger see that's what the rock is for not only will you survive but every storm that comes is going to make you stronger it's going to make you stronger and it's going to make you stronger it's going to make you stronger and one day you're going to be standing and say devil bring it on i don't care what you bring on we 43 years in we may not sleep in the same bed sometime but we're going to ride this thing on out i hear you elder proto he said she always going to be in the bed with me but one day she might not be in there with me come on somebody but i'm telling you today you ride out the storm Christ is your rock today. Hmm? You can't build your marriage on surgeries. You can't build your marriage on, 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 on how great their figure looks. You can't build no marriage on how much money people make. You can't build no marriage on this, that, and the third. You got to build your marriage on the rock of Jesus Christ. And when the storms of life come and wars of your life, then we still going to stand, serve God, and give him the glory. World Trade Twin Towers, 9-11-2001. Some of y'all too young to know that. Some of you just was babies. Paul, you were just one years old. You and Chrisanne, y'all was just one. Some of y'all, 2,000 babies. Y'all, why 2K babies? 2,000, but 2001 came. September 11. Everybody know where they were at on September 11. 9-11. The Twin Towers came down. World Trade Center, Twin Towers. The mad planes flew right into them towers. And, and the columnist said them buildings are not going to, uh, uh, they're going to withstand the blow. We just have to rebuild from the bottom. Um, it's going to take a major work, but them, the them buildings are going to sustain that fire. And they did. But what they didn't count on, the fuel from them mad planes poured all the way down to the basement and it went on to the pillars of the basement and it started eroding the foundational pillars in which them builders stood and after a while you seen them buildings tumble what all the way down over 400 almost 400 firemen lost their life in the world trade centers why because the foundation was negotiated so when the fiery darts of the enemy come I'm finna close when the fiery darts of the enemy come to destroy and collapse your marriage if you build your marriage on the principles of Christ again it will not only stand but it gets stronger 
and don't do what I did. I got married, I, I told that preacher that Christ was going to be first. And he's going to be our purpose for our marriage. I didn't bit more mean that than a green man coming in here today. I was just trying to get married. But I found out quickly why that man told me to build this marriage on Christ. I went back to the clubs. She, didn't, she wasn't even going to the club before we got married. She didn't want to start going to the club. <laughs> See, God just mess you up. She would, I, thought, I thought I was just going to the clubs, and, and I was come home, and, and she going to be there in the bed waiting a while. When Christ, he'll make, you, he, he'll, he'll make a fool out of you. I started her to go into the club. <laughs> I'm sitting at home. <laughs> come on, somebody. Because Christ has got to be the solid rock. Coming home, talking about coming home at three in the morning, talking about it was a, a just an office fellowship. Office fellowships is at twelve o'clock at David and Buster. It's at two o'clock at Top Golf. Come on, somebody! It, it's not at three a.m. in the morning. Uh, amen. Shucking and driving with whoever don't know who it is. Come on, somebody! Uh, uh, it, it don't take all that. Not for no, not, not for no office fellowship. Not at three a.m. I've been in the club a long time to tell you. I ain't never seen an office fellowship at that time in the club. <laughs> left, left me at home wondering when people coming home. I said, I'm the man. I, I, they ain't going to be waiting. On. You got to flip that thing on you. I said, I got to get Christ in here. I got, I got to get him in. I got to step on him. The man said, step on him. And, and I stepped on him and ain't turned back yet. <laughs> Got me from College Park at home looking at my watch. Come on, somebody. Oh, I said, no, I'm going to turn this thing around. Let me, let me find the rock. <laughs> Office fellowship. Are you kidding me? At 3 a.m. Are you kidding me? Got me at home with Paige. She was the only one born then. Just got me at home with Paige. I'm, I'm looking at her. She crying. <laughs> I'm, I'm frustrated. I'm, I'm, uh, I done told the boys I can't go. I'm trying to be a family man. Now she out gone. I said, y'all, I ain't going to be able to go. Y'all, I done told y'all. Now I'm trying to do something different. Trying to do something different with my little wife here. What y'all can do is come on over to my house and play spades if y'all... Hey, man, we ain't trying to play on spades. We going out. I can't go out, man. And I'm sitting at home at 2 a.m. I should have went my butt out. She, when she came home, didn't even, didn't even smell like office fellowship. Didn't even... Come on, somebody. Didn't, 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 uh, come on, somebody. Look like she been dancing all night. The hair wasn't even laid like she had been at the office fellowship at 3 a.m. Come on, somebody. Come on. I was born at night, but not last night. Can I keep on preaching? Yeah, I'd, I'd have made myself open to if, if, if anything come out the past, I got to take it. Come on, somebody. If anything come and they say this is what happened years ago, I got to take it. Come on, somebody, because I didn't have Christ as a solid rock. <laughs> come on, somebody. What are these proven principles? We got the foundations, Christ. Three, three minutes on this. Then we got some proven principles that's going to make you marry last. Give me three minutes. I'm going to be out. First Corinthians chapter number 13. The core ingredient of your house is going to be love. Say love. love. The core ingredient of your house is going to be love. It's going to be one foundational building material. That's going, you're going to find it in every room of the house. You're going to find it in the roof, going to be in the basement, going to be in the station. And that, that, that ingredient, that material, it's going to be love. That's what you got to understand before you get married. That's what us got to understand who are married. 
Love suffers long. Love gonna suffer sometime. You gonna suffer. It's okay. You still got the greatest blessing known to mankind. It is kind. It does not envy. I cannot tell you how many spouses I've been in counsel with who envy one another. They envy each other's success. They envy each other's relationship with their families. I was like that. I was, I'm from a very divided family. I've never been to a family union on my side of the family. Never, not one time. Very divided family. I came into, got married, their family, family unions every year, and I started showing up and, 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 and things like that, and, and, and I felt a certain way. And God showed me one day, you envious of what they have. I was trying to be the odd one out. Y'all go ahead, y'all do what y'all do. I'm going to be out here and everything. Y'all go do. I was envious and didn't even know what God showed me. He said, you envious. He said, what you need to do, because you didn't have that, you need to leverage off of what they have so you can make sure that your family have it. And that's why we go on vacations a lot, a lot. And, 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 and I still take all my older children with me and all of that kind of stuff because I had to learn. I had to learn how to stop being envious of what they had and say, we, I need that. I see a lot of people envious. Does not parade itself, ain't puffed up. Love, love ain't, 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 ain't pride. Has nothing to do with being puffed up. Has nothing to be, I'm the one in the marriage. Can't be the one. We are one. Both of us got to remain humble. Keep going, verse 5. Does not behave rudely. Not rude. Does not seek its own. That's selfishness. Selfishness belongs to no marriage. Love is never selfish. Love always seeks the welfare of the other. Love always seeks to put the other one better off than even than you are. Love uh, sacrifices. It is selfless. It says, okay, to let, to, to let you go and do that, I'm going to reduce myself to let you do what you need to do or what you want to do so that that can be done and then I get to mine when, I, when, when I'm ready. Doesn't matter. Doesn't make sense. It's not provoked. It don't think evil. I'm just picking up some few points of it. Keep going. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. We love the truth. We rejoice in the truth. When somebody tell you that's love, when somebody tell you in love, look, this is going on with you. I want to call that out. I want to talk to you about that. You, you should rejoice in that truth. You, you should rejoice in the fact that somebody loves you so much that they're, they're giving you things that they see from their perspective that's going to make you better. They don't come and say, well, 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 well you know, Richard, uh, uh, you need to, I, I think, you know, you got to watch how you say it too now. But, but you know, Richard, uh, I see this going on with you. I, I really want you to consider this right here. Well, I want you to consider yourself. I want you, I, 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 shoot, I'm holding on to some things too. I'm glad you opened the door. Let, let me come on through the door too then. And before you know it, you understand what I'm saying? We rejoice. Tell me about me. I know I'm not perfect. I'm one of the only Lewis men in my mind. I have to stay like in my only Lewis men who have had a successful marriage. My father and all of them, they used to be married and all that. But I'm talking about a successful marriage. I'm the only one, only one, only one who, who has tried to remain and, and has remained so committed to it. But it takes a lot to keep that in your mind when there's so much that's went on in generations before. Come on, somebody. So you have to always understand your weaknesses and your humanity and all of these and, and understand that, that know that you can use some instruction and truth to help you.
Keep going. Bears all things. You got to bear something. Bear means carry it. Take it. <laughs> that's it says for that's where we get forbearance. You you're able to bear another person's load. I know she's weak. Well, I'm the man. I need to bear this. If I love her, I've got to bear this load. And until we keep going on in Christ and God will deliver her from it. But love says, don't discard her because she's got the scars. But I need to bear the scars with her. That's what love says. And we believe, believe, I believe you, you, you. You're not operating at your potential, but I believe in your potential. It's my job to walk with you. And the man or the woman that God has called you to be, you ain't there yet. You ain't there yet. But baby, you got it in you. I'm, I'm telling you, if you start doing this in your marriage and stop telling people what they ain't, you ain't either. Come on, somebody. Then stop telling people what they ain't and stop telling them what they is. Tell them what they are. You are a strong man. You got the potential. You ain't functioning yet. You ain't leading the house like God has called you to lead. You ain't, you ain't doing the providing role like you are. But I see the potential in you. And you start praying over that potential. You start loving them in the midst of that situation. I'm telling you what's going to happen. That you are going to fertilize the potential. Fertilize the potential. Fertilize the potential. And one day it's going to become a harvest. You got to believe in all things. Hope all things, endures all things. Verse 8, 8 clause. And love will never fail. I'm going to give you something I want you to hear this today. When, you don't, when, you, when you're married, there's no such thing as falling out of love. You were never in love. Love never fails. In Greek, it never decreases. It only grows. That's why when we don't match up to God's expectation, his love never depletes in our lives. It only increases in our lives. How do I know? Because the prodigal son did all of that stuff. But the Bible says when he came to himself, his love, God's father even demonstrated more love over his life because love never decreases. It can only increase. Come on, give God some praise. So when you get married, make sure you love them. Not love what they can do, but love them. Love them as the as is car. That as is specimen may not ever get any better. But can you love them like they are? You can't go in marriage saying, well, this how they is, I'm a, they going to get better. They may not get better in your time. You got to take them where they are. I took my wife where she is. She couldn't cook. She couldn't. Couldn't cook a lick. I tested her. I was living in a little park. I got my first apartment. Welcome all road. Down there. Right there in Union City. Showed up home one day. It was 97 degrees outside, July. I went to my closet and she had all her coats in my closet. I said, oh whoa, whoa, what are we doing? Doing too much. What 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 is what are them coats doing in my closet? In July. Help me Lord. She was suddenly moving in. I say, you're supposed to be in the dorm thing over at Clark with your folk. She's just moving the little stuff in. I seen the coach one day. 
Next day, I seen a lot of tennis shoes and shoes in there. God, I said, I ain't going to say now. But if you're going to stay, can she cook? Oh, I put her to the test. Took that frying pan out. <laughs> you ain't got no money because you're in college. You're going to have to, you got to do something. And I'm, I'll get used to the other stuff, but you got to, you got to put out, you got to do something. You go, can you cook? When she cooked that meal. No, she didn't show out. No, she didn't. I said, what in the, what has happened here? She did the best she could, though. God said, don't put her away, Malcolm. <laughs> I was just lying there with God because I wasn't trying to do God back then. I was an alcoholic or whatever, think about what I was going to, I needed this. And uh, she started cooking. Started cooking. And become the greatest cook I've ever known. Started cooking. Get your Urkel. Don't nobody want Urkel. But if you stay with Urkel long enough, you'll make Urkel what you want him to be. Through God's flow through you. What y'all are that talking about? Y'all, y'all were just praying for your marriage last week. What you, y'all, like y'all over there, like y'all over there courting or something. Y'all just praying for your marriage a few days ago. But God works supernatural exploits. That's what we in today. Amen. Is this making sense, y'all? We finna close. <laughs> but don't forget about my marriage. Pray for my mouth. Don't don't give too much. There's 40 people on this call. Don't give too much information. Huh? We'll back to you. Go put yourself out there. But this is God. Marriage is a beautiful thing. I'm just trying to get Does this happen, y'all? Yes, sir. Amen. Eternal Lord, our God, we thank you, we praise you, we give you honor and glory for those that are watching today, oh God, we pray that this word for those that are married, those who will one day be married, this is positioning them for success. We thank you now, God. We pray for those who may not have entered into a marital union with you. We pray for their salvation now, that they will repent of their sins, that they will confess Jesus Christ as Lord and be saved. So we thank you, we praise you in Jesus' name and every heart said amen. Amen today. Come on, let's all stand.